Hey y'all, it's another edition of Joe's Record Store from the Isthmus of Panama, and it's uh, my day off from work, and I'm enjoying every bit of it, and uh, I don't know what the atmosphere is like in your homeland or wherever part of the world you're in. The U.S. is probably indifferent as far as soccer, or football, as the British call it, or in Nederlands, footballer, I got like a footballer kijken. Ja hoor, oranje zijn gok. Ik heb deze vandaag gekocht. <coughs> Echt gelukkig in de winkel te vinden. I just found this today in the store. And uh, when, uh, I'm, well, it, as I said, it's soccer fever right here in Panama. It's for the World Cup. Unfortunately, Panama team is not good enough to uh, make it to the finals of the World Cup and can't seem to break out of, uh, you know, the Central and South and America area. And so, yeah, they're stuck in Latin America as usual as far as uh, outbound games. But I have my other countries that I love that do well internationally in soccer, and I'm saying I'm ashamed of Panama, not at all. But uh, when I cheer the teams, I cheer for Oranje. They ga gelukkig Oranje kijken. I like Brazil, but when it comes between Brazil and Holland, I have to cheer my Dutch people. I love my Dutch people. Ja, ik weet wel dat ik geen Hollander ben, maar ik ben de volgende beste ding. And and there's inside jokes that we have in Dutch, in Holland. They call me bijna a Nederlander, almost a Dutchman. The uh, Scandinavian Latino that thinks he's a Hollander is the uh, Scandinavian Latino that thinks he's a Dutchman, and uh, the gek American that thinks he's a Hollander is the uh, crazy American that thinks he's Dutch. Because you know when I'm there, it's like I feel like I'm home, even though I'm not really Dutch. You know, I have friends and people that I meet, and ook ik ben in goede zaken om voor de kinderen beetje. That's an inside joke for my Dutch friends. And uh, now, and here's some other shirts. I love Argentina. This is a little uh, tote bag. It kind of looks like a jersey on the front, but it's a tote bag. And uh, Argentina is the uh, rock capital of the Spanish-speaking world, so there's kind of a rock subculture thing with the Argentina shirts. So now, let's get to the sounds at hand. A band... Aside from Striper, one of the uh, first bands I got into they introduced me to the wide, wonderful world of righteous heavy metal, Blood Good. And uh, I've been a fan of them since I was a rebellious little uh, hooligan in junior high. Ironically, the uh, friend of mine who introduced me to Blood Good, or my classmate, I uh, thought religion was, uh, you know, silly, stupid, moronic. You know, you're weak-minded if you fall for that, that type of thing. And, and obviously, and uh, ironically, I I didn't even know it was a Christian band. It's like, he had a ta detonation tape. Like, hey, let me hear it. Come. Oh, this band's weird. I don't know, man. This band's weird. Like, let me, come on, let me hear it. Let, let me check it out. And here I am today talking to you about it, uh, a good time later. And uh, here's one from the beginning of the career into their most recent time of the career. This is a reissue of their four song demo tape, Metal Missionaries, the 25th anniversary. Originally released as a cassette demo in the mid 80s that you know they released and uh, sold themselves through mail order and when they did shows and um, if you have the albums of songs you haven't heard before, but you hear the original raw demo version of the songs where they got really polished for the studio albums, you know, Awake, Accept the Lamb, Anguish and Pain, those ended up on the uh, first album, Battle of the Flesh ended up on the second album, Detonation, and, um, you know, considering the rough, you know, demo quality, maybe they were probably using like an 8-track or maybe a 4-track. I don't know. 
But, um, uh, but uh, unlike the demo, which just had these songs, the CD reissue is, uh, it includes a 1985 uh, 16-minute interview, and the sixth track, the bonus track, the second bonus track is a uh, demo version from, you know, what was then the upcoming album, which is Dangerously Close. I'm mean, just really, I'm really happy with this as a collector's item since, you know, it's highly unlikely I'm ever going to score the original cassette release. You know, whoever has it, they definitely got like a real piece of, uh, you know, righteous metal history there. And forward to the present. And this is their most recent album. Put out. Actually, last recently, late last year, 2013, which I finally got a hold of because you know, I'm in the tropics. It takes me a while to get stuff. And um, I'm really impressed with this album. A lot heavier. And um, you know, they've had a couple periods. You know, along their career, they put some albums that I don't hate them, but you know, that's not exactly, you know, I don't like them as much as the other ones. This one is really good, just harder, heavier than ever. I mean, they're back with a vengeance. Um, <coughs> of course, Oz Fox has also played guitar on this album. And there's two guitar players Oz is one of them, Oz Fox is Striper. He also did live shows with him, like in Norway and other places abroad, I believe. So I'm jealous of you Norwegian viewers out there because, I mean, I would have loved to have seen, you know, not just, you know, YouTube video clips, but really, you know, see that for myself. Osbox on stage with the Blood Good guy. That was like, that would have been like a two for one special for me because I like, I'm also a big Striper fan. But, you know, just, and again, you know, the lyrics uncompromising gospel message um, <clears throat> you know soapbox preaching salvation the love and grace of God and um, you know some of you cynical of religion I'm not trying to beat you in the head with a Bible but if you are you know one of those viewers where if you don't think my videos are Christian enough for you there are other channels on YouTube that I will gladly direct you to if you want more gospel preaching and teaching, like a Righteous Rock Show. Um, there's another one called Metal Cross. You know, just type it in the search engine, so and then you'll just get more than a guy talking about music. So off that little soapbox, but definitely a great, you know, living white metal history right there. This is a band that, uh, their name was floating around the Christian metal world, you know, way back when, when I was a kid, and up until recently, the only music I had from Taker were two tracks on the, that they had on the East Coast Metal Compilation, and, um, and, um, I'll, I'll say, I mean, I'll tell you honestly, when I first heard Taker, I thought they were just a wimpy band. And, uh, you know, later down the years, you know, Rocks Records has been doing a good job, especially doing CD reissues of bands that just, you know, haven't had anything other than a demo or, you know, one or two songs on a, you know, widely spread compilation back in the day. And, you know, this is before the internet. But, um, again, they put, you know, their the demo tapes together plus the two tracks from... East Coast Metal. There were the raw, you hear the raw demo versions and the versions done for the compilation. It was just supposed to make them more appealing and make them more apt to sign, but they were looked over. You know, of course, the market was flooded with, you know, this and that heavy metal band here and there. But, uh, you know, going back in time and appreciating the history of the genre, they actually had, like, even better, harder, heavier songs. If you can imagine, like, the the best of, uh, you know, early era Queensryche, um, maybe just a little bit of early Face Warning, with high melodic vocals, of course, you know, some of 
striper and mass thrown in for good measure. Um, I mean, they were good, but they didn't really stand out from, you know, the flood of metal-oriented bands. And even at this time, even Christian metal was was starting to get a little more redundant at this time, you know, just like any genre. So this is, it just finished the complete anthology. There's the old band picks. And, so it's, and um, the sound quality, you know, does have a lot to be desired, but... As I said, these are taken from like old demo tapes. I mean, some some of these tapes are probably literally older than some of my viewers. And um, you know, trying to digitize it, remaster, try to you know make it as smooth and clean as possible. But you know, some of the fuzziness and staticiness is still there. But uh, if these guys had better production or you know, had better production, they were signed to a proper re record deal. I mean, these guys, I'm sure of it, no doubt, they would have put out, like, you know, an album as smooth as what Recon could do, or, uh, you know, their contemporaries, Haven. Just good, straightforward, melodic metal, good high vocals. And why on the subject of melodic metal, or power metal, U.S. power metal, Sacred Warrior. This is their latest edition. It came out late last year in 2013. And uh, finally got my hands on it, just like Blood Good. And um, I do kind of miss uh, Ray Para, who's the original Sacred Warrior vocalist. But the other guy who I believe sang for Recon, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but uh, you know, he's done a great job you know, handling the uh, vocal duties for Sacred Warrior. Very... This one is a lot more like heavy metal, power metal, makes a little progressive metal there. Great melodic uh, hooks and harmonies from the guitars. You know, strong rid you know backbone, rhythm section. Uh, you know, just all in all, everything I loved about Sacred Warrior, but just you know, just heavier and more pounding than before. Waiting in Darkness, definitely check their video out on YouTube. I, mean, I don't think you'll be disappointed. And uh, Sacred Warrior was, you know, one of the early batch of Christian metal bands I got into when I was a new metalhead. And uh, when I took their uh, the cassette Rebellion home from the Christian bookstore. And um, it's like every album got better, better, and up to Obsessions, just better than... They've always been able to musically outdo the one before. Um, and the production will always be a little bit better. And uh, that's it, you know. And so I'm glad they're back together. And uh, maybe I'll do another Sacred Warrior layout. I definitely have. And this is a band I'm still trying to get, like, their whole discography on CD. You know, next month I'm hoping to get get uh, everything and, and I can lay it out for you. Especially Obsessions. I love Obsessions. Some people disagree. They say Wicked Generation is better or Rebellion is better. But, hey, that's, you know, being a music fan, opinions vary. And that's that for, like, you know, the best of uh, classic Christian metal. Reissued and re-released. Or a comeback album. Rock on, stay metal. Thanks for watching Joe's Record Store.